I want to answer the question if I haven't already. Is there an antichrist? Now, what I mean by that is the common and prevailing viewpoint that the antichrist is some or will be some all-powerful demon seed man that's going to rise up and uh, deceive the whole world and exercise power over the whole world. Nowhere do we read of that uh, occurring in the Bible. Jesus never spoke of it. None of his apostles never spoke of Antichrist as being that. In fact, we find the expression Antichrist, Antichrist, one time, mentioned only four times in the Bible. First uh, John chapter 2, verse 18. First John chapter 2, verse 22. First John 4, 3. And second John 7. Four times. Never in the book of Revelation. Antichrist is not a person. Antichrist is persons, plural. If one goes to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, the Apostle John tells us there that there are many Antichrists. And the Apostle John wrote that more than 2,000 years ago, well, about 2,000 years ago. So back in John's day, there were many Antichrists. And there are many Antichrists today. Look at the expression, anti-Christ. What's another word for anti? To be in opposition to. So anyone who is opposed to Christ's teachings or opposed to him, period, they're antichrists. And I'm gonna tell you something. Christianity is the primary antichrist, plural, antichrist as plural, many in the world today. Because Christianity, while it claims it teaches Christ, that it believes in Christ, that it professes faith in Christ, teaches things that Christ did not teach, did not. That's anti. If Jesus says that no one goes to heaven, Christianity is going to teach you're going to heaven. If Jesus teaches that he is God's son, Christianity is going to teach you that Jesus is God. That's an opposition to. That's anti. If Jesus teaches a resurrection for all of mankind, but Christianity teaches a rapture, that's anti. And I can go on and on with this. But Christianity doesn't see itself as such. You have to be out of it to look at it to know that it is antichrist. At 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, the Apostle John says that those who deny the Father and the Son are antichrist. Those, not he, but those, many, who deny the Father and the Son are Antichrist. So if Christianity teaches that there's a trinity, now we have a problem. How so? Because now it makes the Father God, and that's true, but it also makes the Son God, and also makes the Holy Spirit God. So if Christianity makes Jesus God, then what does that do? That denies the Father his exclusive position as being God. And if Christianity makes Jesus God, then it denies the Son his exclusive position as the Son of God and the Word of God because it also makes the Bible the Word of God. See how that works? Christianity denies both the Father and the Son, and that makes it Antichrist. At 1 John chapter 4, verse 3, the Apostle John says that those who deny that Jesus is from God are Antichrist. If Christianity teaches that Jesus is God, then it doesn't teach that Jesus is from God. See, there's a difference. Jesus can't be God and then at the same time be from God or be from himself. That doesn't make sense. So Christianity teaches confusion also. But the point here is that Christianity, by making Jesus God, doesn't teach that Jesus is from God or has been sent by God. And the last instance of Antichrist is found at 2 John 7, where we read that Antichrist is the deceiver. Such a person is a deceiver. 
such a person. We're referring to many persons here. That, it's not saying one person is going to rise up. And since Christianity is such a deceiver, it has moved itself over into the uh, book of Revelation and it associates the beast with Antichrist. Christianity almost always does that. Yet we don't find any Christ mentioned in Revelation. I've seen videos of individuals where they have images of um, a man with red eyes and across his forehead or his chest are the number 666. Christianity simply doesn't care. It really doesn't care about the truth. It just throws stuff out there to scare people. It has to use scare tactics to draw people to into itself rather than the truth and love. A lot of these preachers, you see them on YouTube, they're, they're hurling threat and intimidation of being tormented for all eternity in hellfire if you don't do this because God's going to get you. This is what they do. There's nothing loving about that. And whenever I uh, listen to any of these so-called teachers, preachers, pastors, and apostles, the first scripture that comes to mind is what Paul wrote at Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 22 and 23, where Paul wrote about the uh, fruit of the Spirit. And I ask myself, do those men up there who are preaching and hurling threat of eternal torment in the hellfire, are they displaying the fruit of the Spirit? That's my measuring rod with those persons. And none of them do. They love to threaten. They love to uh, uh, paint and betray God as a, as a God that's going to get you if you don't join our church, if you don't give your tithes. And they're yelling and carrying on like madmen up there. And then they get the um, persons out there in the pews, they get them all agitated and emotional and thrown into a frenzy. What is that? Are those things the fruit of the Spirit? They call it getting the Holy Spirit. But think about that. When persons are, are jumping around and wailing and their arms are flinging back and forth and they're carrying on like that, do you see any of the fruit of the Spirit being displayed there? You can't tell them that because they believe that it is. But where do we read anywhere in this book called the Bible individuals conducted themselves like that? That is God, godly person. We don't see that. What we do see are demons being agitated and carrying on in such a matter or causing uh, people rather to um, carry on in such a matter, in such a manner. So there is no antichrist as in one man. There will never be an antichrist like we see portrayed in Hollywood movies. And Christianity simply will not stop with that narrative. It continues to promote that lie. There are many antichrists, and also antichrist is a spirit, the spirit of antichrist. For example, you guys can hear my words, but you can't see them. The words that come out of my mouth are spirits, not like, you know, ghost <laughs> type spirits, but my words are invisible to you. You can hear them. So when individuals teach things, they speak things that are not truthful and not from God and not from Christ, those are spirits or teachings of Antichrist. And when individuals hear those spirits or those teachings, now they're eating, they're digesting those false teachings and false spirits and now they have them within them. So when they regurgitate and speak that which they heard to others, they infect others with uh, those false teachings. And that's how that force fire is spread. The truth is very important. If you are a teacher and you want to station yourself above others or with others as teachers of God and teachers of Christ, you had better make sure that you know what you're talking about. Your best option is to approach the Father in prayer and ask him 
if this is what he wants you to do and for him to infuse you with understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so that when you do teach, you're teaching rightly and properly. And you had better know Christ's teachings because as it's written in the book of James, that teachers will be judged more harshly because the things that you say, if it is incorrect, others are going to take that and run with it and speak to other uh, persons. And then from that person to that person, from that person to that person, and before you know it, a forest fire has been set, a forest fire full of lies and error because of what you said. So make sure that you know Christ's teachings, not what the Bible teaches. <laughs> See, and this is another reason why people go wrong, because they want to equate the Bible with what Jesus taught. These are two different things. You can't do that. You only become confused. Yet you see a lot of these uh, persons out here on YouTube, they always say things like the Bible says. And you know why they say that? Because they know that if they say that Jesus says it, it's going to come back and bite them in the butt. Because there are many things that Jesus taught that are contrary to what the Bible teaches. Not everything, but a lot of things. But it is Jesus. He's the one that we should be listening to in the first place. Not a book called the Bible. So it's rare that you'll hear individuals say things like uh, Jesus says or Jesus teaches. They're going to say the Bible says... And when they say that, unwittingly, in many cases, they are making the Bible the word of God rather than saying Jesus teaches and listening to what Jesus has to say about a matter. With me, I'm not even thinking on the lines of what the Bible says. It's what my master says. A book can't save me. And I said this before. A book can't save you. Only Christ can and God gave us a command at Luke chapter 9, verse 35. Many of you know that's one of my favorite scriptures. At Luke chapter 9, verse 35, God gives the command that we listen to his son. Not a book. We listen to his son. So to say the Bible says, the Bible is not the son. <laughs> Jesus is. But you can't tell these Christians that. They don't want to hear it. They want to push the Bible at people as if it is the end all thing, and it should not be. Christ is all wisdom and knowledge and understanding is tied up in Christ, not a book called the Bible. So there is no antichrist, as in one man. There are many antichrists, and they, you see them every day. They're everywhere. The world is saturated with them. This is Ardrum Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.